All right, welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. This time around, we're moving on to off the press. And Mercy, you've got that. All right, we have Okpunabon Katara. He's on standby. He joins the conversation in no time. Okpunabon Katara, happy holiday to you and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. Happy holiday. And uh, happy holiday, Nigeria. But can you hear me? Loud, Loud and, and clear. clear. Okay, thank you. Uh, we start off with the leadership newspaper this morning, uh, looking at the top caption or big stories on the leadership. It starts with the Eid al Fatri. President Mohammed Buhari promises final victory against terrorists, enemies of state. I mean, that was part of our conversation on Top Trending this morning. Quite interesting why these terrorists have not been arrested. Uh, no one is in prison. So um, underneath, you have another writer saying, says terrorists masquerading under the name of Islam will meet their Waterloo. President might just really be very angry at this point in time. You have Khan rejoices with Sultan Muslims and urges peace and unity. These are the writers underneath the bold caption. Now, away from that, you also find another header saying, reps holds emergency plenary on proceeds of crime bill. Two orders on Wednesday. All right. Troops killed 22 ESWAP fighters, arrest armed suppliers in Lake Chad. And just before we move away from the leadership, we're tackling issues facing workers. The federal government is saying, you know, the time where you have workers being celebrated. Ohanese fault northern elders over zoning rejection. And this is as regards 2023, talking about the 2023 elections. Ohanese fault northern elders over zoning re rejection. Kaduna NLC mourns 36 workers killed by bandits. Ango Abdullahi's son, Sadiq, released by attackers of Abuja Kaduna train. These are the headlines on the leadership. All right, away from the leadership, we'll slide on next to the Daily Independent. The lead story is on the workers. Uh, Nigerians uh, weaker, uh, on Nigerians weaker purchasing power piles more pressure on the economy. Uh, with um, a picture there on workers' day, uh, two pictures actually. May Day, Labour gives condition for 2023 general elections. Then 2023, Ohanese decries Northern Elders' position on zoning. Kaduna train attacks. Serap drags Buhari to ECOWAS court of a failure to protect rescue victims. A Sala a victory over Boko Haram within sight. Buhari says funding for security won't be a challenge. Strike. Oshibajo uh, begs labor leaders to intervene in ASU FG Ampers. All right. Uh, Let's see this writer then. Says 16 million blocks are still on the May Day. Uh, says 16 million block votes will go to candidate parties with bias for workers' welfare, the man's free education, and of course, um, health care. Labor is actually making the man, sir, ahead 2023. If you provide all of this for us, sir, we will uh, give uh, 16 million um, block votes to you. That's what Labor is saying. Uh, those are the main stories on the Daily Independent newspaper this Monday morning. Away from the Daily Independent, we take a quick look at the Punch newspaper. And uh, you have subsidy deduction hit states hard. Governors owe salaries. Workers lament. This is the board caption. Underneath, no fact remittance from NMPC in first quarter. Subsidy gob 675.93 billion naira. This is according to report. Ganduje owes retirees 25 billion naira gratuitous. Others. NLC says WK owes pension. And you have some of those persons who have decided to be, I mean, declare interest to become, um, you know, president. And when they can solve little problems in your state, how do you explain all of that? Benway Ondo Ekiti. Others, all workers, salaries, gratuities, pension, pensioners grown. Really sad one at a time where you have workers being celebrated across the entire you know, world. 
The vice president gets high presidential survey ratings and a former governor's group disagrees. As you find on the punch, Lawan orders Nardiners to join APC presidential race. Interesting. It El Fitri, Buhari says end of terrorism near governors preach peace. Blackout hits CBN Army headquarters orders. Disco blames vandals. We will definitely continue in this circle. And just before we move away, labor demands better deal salary increase from government on May Day. You also have over 50 companies shut down over forex and power crisis, according to an investigative report. Pension funds now 13.88 trillion, 61% invested in bonds. Others, this is according to a report that's been made available. And students accuse Amote Kun operatives of extortion. Security outfit denies. So you also have another header saying three-story building collapses in Lagos, resident traps. Three-story building collapses in Lagos as residents are trapped. These are the headlines, some of them on the Punch newspaper this morning. And finally, we'll take the Nigerian Tribune. The lead story this morning, Buhari's ministers, others miss resignation deadlines, Falano Edun. Ajulo will speak on their chances. Reps confirm recovery of over 17 billion naira missing revenue. Summon 96 companies over alleged tax evasion. Four die, others injured in third mainland bridge accident. 36 workers killed as a result of banditry in Kaduna. NLC chairman uh, is quoted on that. Abu had ranked best university in Nigeria. One of the best 400 in the world. Party primaries won't hold without resolution of ASU strike. Nans. All right, 201 aspirants jostle for PDP governorship tickets. Gale of disqualifications as PDP screens aspirants across state. Uh, May Day, our 16 million block votes will go to worker-friendly parties. That's according to Labour, vows to mobilize workers against low-performing governors, calls for general salary review for civil servants. Let's see if we can take uh, one more. 2023, or your APC committee holds marathon meetings to choose candidates. Committee may submit report tomorrow. And those are all of the stories uh, you can find on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. Open up on Katara as a standby. He joins us uh, shortly. It's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good morning. Well, can you see me? Yes, yes we can, can see you and we can hear you uh, clearly. Okay. I can see you. What happened? All right. Uh, I'm let's start off with the punch. Uh, it talks about subsidy deduction, heating states very hard. Uh, you have governors owing salaries. Uh, this is really, really sad. Okay. Um, well, I don't think the issue of salaries. I know a lot of us have always said uh, states that cannot, that are not self-sustaining, uh, don't don't have any business. The truth about it is that most of the states in this country depend on federal costs, and so whenever the revenue is affected at the federal level, they are stranded. They get frustrated. And it affects every other thing or governance, in fact, in that very state. And that is the problem. Now, if you talk of uh, subsidies, this is a government that initially said there was no subsidy. All of a sudden, it made a use of, you know, that, oh, no, there was subsidy, but it's going to scrap the subsidy uh, because it made no sense. It's wasting so much money. And as at when it said it was going to scrap that subsidy, 12 was about a hundred and something naira or thereabout. Right now, we have the fuel selling at exorbitant price. The PMS, the diesel, uh, our petroleum products, kerosene, and what have you. And yet, we are still talking of subsidy. The subsidy, as far as I'm concerned, there is no longer no more subsidy. But it's just being used by the cabal, and the government is also complicit. It's just being used by this microscopic fuel 
to enrich themselves at the detriment of the of, of Nigerians. It is far this state cannot pay salary simply because the revenue of the federal government has reduced. But it is extremely sad. Such a state has no business exist. They should look inward and uh, also depend more on internal generation revenue. Then we also have to uh, work on our laws. There has to, there has to be an alteration, an amendment of our laws. I'm talking of the land use act. Uh, we are so that states will be empowered to also depend on because every state in this country is blessed with one or two natural mineral resources. So we have to amend this law so that states will be empowered to explore and pay taxes to the center. I think to a very large extent this will ameliorate the sufferings that this state face whenever uh, the revenue dwindles from a uh, All right, uh, let's take another story, another paper now, the Nigerian Tribune. Let's take that story, uh, the lead one, Buhari's ministers orders May's resignation deadlines, Falano Edun, Ajilo speak on their chances. If I may just have to preempt um, these, uh, law may, um, these uh, legal practitioners, Ubunabo, what would you say are their chances, not that they have missed uh, the deadline for their resignation as stipulated by the party guidelines? Except the, the court will make a judgment that will be retroactive. Honestly, I don't think they are going to be affected in any way. Now you're talking of the electoral act. Now at times I wonder what the legal practitioners at the National Assembly, what they are doing. Because uh, the Electoral Act is puny, inferior to the uh, Constitution. And for you to amend that aspect of the Electoral Act, you must first of all amend the, con the Constitution. The Constitution says 30 days. The Electoral Act is saying otherwise. Now, which is superior? Definitely the Constitution. So what the National Assembly would have done was to first of all amend that Constitution, that aspect of the Constitution. Because if the court will strictly censor, interpret it, and pass a judgment on based on a strict interpretation, then definitely this Constitution is supreme. And the Constitution is in 30 days. There is no way the Electoral Act will take precedence in a one that uh, matter is in our constitution. So to the extent of that inconsistency, it is null and void. But well, it is going to be a matter of, of it's already subjected to the clinical prognosis of the legal lab. The judges are going to make keep their judgment. But most of us are a little bit worried because most of these judgments are procured. I will tell you the truth, I really don't have confidence in our judiciary. I sincerely don't have confidence in that situation. Because most times the judgments they give are so ridiculous that it is quite obvious, even to the layman, that the judgments are procured. The Constitution says 30 days. My dear brother, we all know that anything that is inconsistent with the provisions of the Constitution, to the extent of that inconsistency, that error is null and void. So why do we have to quibble over these issues? The Electoral Act is just like when the Electoral Act uh, almost robbed INS of his file on uh, deciding the modus operandi, how to conduct its election. And I said here, yeah, I think even though it was even on your patient, and I said here, yeah, they don't need to even bother themselves because that has been taken care of in the Constitution. And I'm, I was very happy when even first the case came on board to say he doesn't need to double his time on that. Because as far as INEC is concerned, the Constitution has given it the vial, the power to decide the election the way it did say before that was reversed. So I expect the National Assembly to do due diligence before you amend any, come up with any law or amend anything that is provided for in the Constitution. You must, first of all, amend that aspect of the Constitution. Because the electoral has any law in the land is inferior to the Constitution unless the court says so. The only, the only uh, body, arm, that can decide otherwise, and it will become a law, even if the Constitution says, your name is justice, and the Supreme Court says, your name is no longer justice, your name is no longer justice. 
But if it has to be strict interpretation of the law, then the Supreme Court will decide, will depend, will rely so much on the provisions of the Constitution and will act in reliance upon that. So, uh, to me, it, well, let's wait for the Supreme Court judgment because definitely get the Supreme Court. So let's just wait for the Supreme Court judgment so that we hear from you. All right, uh, let's so whatever, the Supreme Court says, whatever the Supreme Court says it is, is what it is. Uh, let's quickly turn our attention to the punch. I beg your pardon, the leadership newspaper this morning. I mean, it talks about the president's promise as regards uh, the issue of victory over terrorists. Are you excited by this promise uh, where the president is saying this uh, final victory well, against terrorists? Well, I mean, looking at the fact that as well, of last month, it was reported that ISWAP leader was killed. It feels like peace might just be returning to the northeastern part of the country. Uh, Mercy, well, most of us are not going to be deluded by such absolutes. I mean, it's a high blood pressure of dissenting veterans and an enemy of all this performance. There is no day we don't hear of technical defeat, systematic defeat, all kinds of defeat, and the situation festers on daily basis. There yeah, is what you call in law, rest the sound of people. It speaks for itself. Even the blind will know. The deaf will see. The dumb will see. The situation gets worse by the day. So we are not interested in all this thundering, all kinds of uh, threats and all. Act. When you act, you don't need to speak. Nigerians, especially our leaders, are loquacious in nature. Every time, who grew up young children talking like parrots and acting less. They are not doing anything. You don't need to come and tell Nigerians. I don't need to tell you, Mercy, that you're a woman. If I come to tell you you're a man, you, you see that you want somebody to examine my head or you think I'm drinking and just laugh. Nobody needs to tell Nigerians if there is peace, if there is security in the nation. We will see. Every day you say this, you, you, you struggle, you're having security meetings. What are you doing with security meetings? As you're having the meetings and they are coming out, you, you watch things happen. So Nigerians are sick and tired. We are just waiting for very good peace. I mean, we, we, but Okunabon Katara, don't you think? And, it, and there is a high level of complicity. That is why this thing is still on. A lot of people are benefiting tremendously from this crisis. I can tell you that. There are people that are uh, turned billionaires as a result of this. You know, it's like more or less now like a gravy train. So, uh, the worry. I don't know why I say Buhari himself, Buhari cannot escalate himself. How will you give orders to military, uh, the service chiefs, and they will not carry out those orders, and there is no punitive measure whatsoever? We have a plethora of cases. The former Inspector General of Police, the former service chiefs in terms of the Burakai group, and so rather they were rewarded with ambassadorial appointment. What have we done? They said, you voted money. Their uh, successors came on board to say nothing was purchased, and they were given ambassadorial appointment. That's the high level of complicity we are talking about. We have Gumi who come on air to defend this character, and yet nothing is done with so much impunity. So there's high level of complicity, and that is why this thing is first. Um, but, I mean, if, if you look at this, uh, there are reports that in 2022 of course the new year you have a lot of terrorists who have actually surrendered um it was also reported that the leader of iswap has been killed and so with all of this progress report I'll from the you. government that, uh, you, you also that's have the military right. being deployed you know to, to tackle some of this and uh, some of these communities that they have see. occupied in the north has I've heard, been returned I've heard now, but let me quickly respond because very soon now you tell me no time let me quickly respond now we still had the military when the and this terrorists on daily basis overwhelmed this military men. If you go to Borno and so on, you still have this terrorists occupying in charge of so many local governments. The governors are not crying out, not to blame the violence. So what is happening? That is number one. Then number two, you're saying most of them have absorbed their sins and penitently have going to the government. That is a lie. You see, what is happening is that you remember it was the same president who said if the Niger Delta militants can be granted amnesty, why not Boko Haram? So, in order not to eliminate these characters, what they do is talk to them to, uh, to pretend to absorb their sins and penitently oppose the government and will grant them amnesty. 
Then we'll go back. Aerofy said it. It is not Obama that said it. Aerofy said he even paid ransom. He paid money to them and so They went back to continue their nefarious activity. So most times they come in to recruit more persons. Aerofy said it. So most of us are not impressed and cannot be deceived by such uh, gimmick. It's, it's just a strategy employed by the government to protect its own. That is what is going on. It's not that, okay, look at what is going on in the Southeast. Once there is any major uprising or a minor uprising, they send the military and they wipe out villages. But what of the North? When they come to the North, they say, oh, they are trying to have uh, collateral, uh, collateral damage. That is what they say. Oh, they force the law uh, until they brand them terrorists. There are certain actions you cannot do. They've been branded terrorists by the court. What is happening? What is happening? So it's a convoluted thing. The federal government is complicitous in this matter. It was the same Sanya Baja who said, when something goes, the crime subsists for more than 14 hours, the government is involved. And that is a fact. It's, it's irrefragable. It is a fact. And that is what is going on in this country. They are trying to protect their own. We cannot kill our own. We did not kill the militants in the Niger Delta. So we cannot kill our own. It was Buhari who said, I said it, before he became out of state, a uh, president, that if the Nigerian Delta military can be granted, why would you grant Bukhari? He said it. So what else? And they now nominated him, although he declined. They now nominated him to represent them. So what are we talking about? Who are you going to deceive? And right. what is going on? All right, uh, let's take uh, more stories. I'll move on to the daily independent newspaper. Two stories are catching my attention right now. The first one is a Nigerian's weaker purchasing power, powers more pressure on the economy. Then again, the May Day, uh, you know, Labour is making demands and giving conditions for 2023 general elections. Open up, how do you react to all of this? Sorry, what's the first one? The first one, Nigerian's weaker purchasing power Pals more pressure oh, okay, on the economy. Okay, okay. Um, uh, Dustin, it's lucid. It's, it's quite simple. I mean, uh, if you cannot afford, it has a domino effect. Mm. If, if, for example, uh, you have a market woman selling Gary, selling rice and so on, and you don't have the money to buy, of course, the rice will remain with her. What is she going to do with the rice? She's selling the rice to make money. And if she makes money from it, she's also going to make purchases, probably to buy television, probably to buy other things. So that's a domino effect. So when Nigerians are in pecunious, when there is no money, and you don't have the purchasing power, capability, or ability, it affects the economy. Because there is, the money is no longer in circulation. It's as simple as that. It's quite those things. I mean, you don't need uh, uh, a professor party to me to come and explain this to anybody. It's simple and basic economics. So the domino effect is what is impacting negatively on our economy. The labor is giving demands or making demands are giving out to me terms and conditions for 2022 general elections. What are your thoughts? Very quickly. It's simple. Labor, labor, labor wants a leader that will empathize and sympathize with workers and not somebody that will come on board and not pay salaries, not pay pensioners, I mean, uh, the solicitors in summary for the welfare of workers. That's what Labour is saying. So they want a friendly, a Labour-friendly governor or president. Somebody that will be trusted in their welfare. You empathize, sympathize with them, and at the same time meet their demands. At least the basic demand. Working conditions, welfare, and so on. That's what Labour is talking about. Because most of these uh, leaders are not interested. They come to you for votes, they get into office, they abandon you. They immediately become emperors and em uh, uh, kings and what you in fact they are lead lords and the rest of uh, the rest of us are uh, become lead servants. And so Labour is saying no, this time around they are going to be very careful and give their votes to a labor friendly uh, governor or labor friendly president. When they say labor friendly worker friendly governor or worker friendly president. Somebody that will address the needs of the worker. And that is what uh, they want. And that is the person that will give their votes. 
All right, thank you so much. I'm open about Ingo Terry. That's as much as we can take on today's uh, segment of um, Off the Press. Uh, we do appreciate your time and your thoughts that you thank have you shared. So thank right. you so much. All right. It is to the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We'll take a quick break. But first off, let's see what happened this day in history and come back and talk about uh, industrial relations and labor matters in a moment. Stay with us.